the reperfusion injury in the convexities or in the posterior fossa happens in the gyriform fashion. But in the basal ganglia, there will be some amount of doubt between reperfusion injury and primary hemorrhage. This gets a little tricky, but there are a couple of things by which we can differentiate between these two entities in majority of the cases. One is shape of the hemorrhage. Reperfusion injury will always be wedge shaped because the infarct itself will be wedge shaped and the hemorrhagic changes which are happening within the infarct will also be wedge shaped. Whereas a primary hemorrhage will have irregular shape. And the second thing that you should look at is extension of the hemorrhage. If the hemorrhage is extending even minimally into the temporal lobe inferiorly or just above the ventricular level superiorly, it is more likely to be a primary hemorrhage. The reason is again, if it is an infarct secondary to lenticulostrate perforators, it will not extend into the temporal lobe. And these perforators will be supplying up to the ventricular margins only. They will not extend above the ventricular system. So if it is a reperfusion injury, it will not extend into the temporal lobe or above the ventricular system. It will have well-defined margins and typically wedge shaped just like the infarct. In case of primary hemorrhage, it can have irregular margins. It can extend superiorly above the ventricular system and inferiorly into the temporal lobe. And using these extensions, in majority of the cases, you can differentiate between these two.